I went in and at the time we were training in the morning and we'd go up and we'd have brunch and I'd just been doing a little bit of rehab, nothing really, like the little 18-year-old kid, 60 kilos, and I'd come in, the boys would just finish training, I'd put some toast in. Anyway, come up and there's Mark, Mark Gerard just walks in and he goes, oh mate, you're gonna have some toast, are you? And I was like, oh, I, no. Then he's like, he's like, he's like, you've been here two minutes, mate, I've been here eight years. No, no, but you have some toast. And I was like, whoa, okay, no toast, no toast. And then, and then George, George Smith pokes his head out from behind the wall, he goes, oh, you wanna play that game, do you, Mark? And I'm like, oh, and he's like, no, put your toast back in, Nick. And I'm like, no, I didn't want toast. So here I'm, George Smith on one side telling me, no, have your toast. Mark Gerard going like, no, you can fuck off now. And I'm like, well, well, okay. Let's get out of here. Hello and welcome to the Rugby Pass Offload Podcast with Max Lee, uh, Ryan Wilson and myself, Mark Edwards. Later on in the show, we will be joined by Wallaby Scrum Half, uh, Nick White. But first things first, Ryan, have you got over the, the heartbreaking loss at Lyon at the weekend? Well, I have, just about, boys. Tough one to take. We should have had it again. I should have 100%. You definitely should have had that one. Gee, <laughs> God. 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 Man, oh, I tell you, I don't know what was worse, losing it or I didn't, well, I didn't run for, since the Bulls game, I just tried to get over that dead leg. So I hadn't run for nine days, I think it was, and then straight into that. So uh, I actually felt quite fresh for it, to be fair, but managed to grind my way for about 65 minutes after doing nothing all week. But yeah, tough one to take. Um, it was there, it was there for us, but they pulled it back, didn't they? The old Leon boys. Some atmosphere. That place is wicked. I loved going over there. Have you ever played there, Max? Nah, I played as a great city though. Yeah, beautiful city. Absolutely amazing. But um, no, it's a pretty cool setup they've got there. They got the big tents out the back, and they just do it right in France, don't they? Yeah, the tents out the back for the Vin Rouge. The uh, the apres is so tasty as well. The food they do is glorious. I don't know about the nine o'clock kickoff though. Yeah, that was that's not ideal, is it? Mate, I had a few of those. They're pretty weird. And we charted, we charted there, so we charted straight back. So we we didn't leave the ground till about half 11, 12. Flew into Edinburgh because Glasgow Airport wasn't open for us to fly into. So you land in Edinburgh and then back at four in the morning. So I think that shouldn't be allowed. For the I, sake of European spirit of rugby, you should have to stay and take part in the accommodating hosts, culture and city, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> 100% honestly it was kicking off as well as we were all getting on the bus because we were like right boys grab a bit of pizza have a beer we're straight on the bus we're getting back to the airport and as we're coming out it's just starting to kick off in these big tents and I'm thinking oh god what I'd love to do to get in there mm. um, but no you're right it shouldn't be allowed it shouldn't be allowed but uh, in the old days, it was impossible you had you couldn't, couldn't get a chartered flight back now it's so easy to get chartered flights for some reason I'm not I'm not enjoying it yeah I know That's is there a reason you don't stay is it cost or, or anything um, else? I think it's, it's, like, it's all last minute because obviously quarters and semis, you don't know who you're playing, you don't know where you're going. They're last minute arrangements. And then obviously you're saving a bit of money. You can't just get any flight out there. So they charter there. And then obviously you think, well, we've got a plane on standby. We might as well just get on it rather than pay another, um, what, 20 odd hotel room. So they pull us back. But for the love of the game, man, let us stay. Uh, right, let's dive into the Champions Cup weekend. Wow. And wow. It was big. big story. Incredible match between Munster and Toulouse at the Aviva. 40,000 fans, a penalty shootout to decide the match. Uh, Max, take us through the, the madness of, of what unfolded in the Dublin Sunshine. Oh, that's like, uh, yeah, but it, it was a, it basically, it essentially ended up in a draw and then. It was a great draw as well. I, I really enjoyed it. A Viva, a Viva Stadium as well. I thought it would be a bit quiet. God, it was man- amazing, like manic stadium. And Toulouse kept up with them, with the um, with the 16th man and, and managed to pull away with it in the end with a penalty shootout. Ain't seen that but since uh, Jordan Crane sent Leicester to, to glory against Cardiff Blues. Who missed it? Martin oh, Williams, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Fuck. He was Mr. Cardiff at the time. Poor yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, uh, man, an amazing game. Started off with Ken Dellen going over the seven. Do you see him bump the prop? Right. Bump the tight head who was having a hell of a game. I think that was um Toulouse's big into the uh, match, actually, the scrum time. They they dominated up front. But um there were so many strong performances. I thought Mike Haley was outstanding. 
big fella before he had to go off of HIA. And then obviously LaBelle looked very naughty. Did you see him do Zeebs on oh, this? Right at the, the end with that little step. <laughs> oh, God. That's like the worst. You're coming in, you got to fill the disconnect. And then uh, the magic <laughs> feet, feet like a tap dancing centipede. Hell of a finish. Um, I think I've upset our old mate Zeebs. Did you see um, oh, no. someone uh, Someone put out that, that video of him getting absolutely melted? Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, so he gets, uh, he gets, it's, it's a late-ish shot. Uh, I wouldn't okay. say it's late. Yeah. And he gets absolutely upended. It was on like some, something on Instagram and someone was like, is this a yellow card? And I tagged him saying, no chance it's a yellow. And he's just bitten like hard, oh, <laughs> bitten hard. Like, yeah, my feet, I, I wasn't horizontal. I didn't land on my neck. I didn't get whiplash. <laughs> I was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Fishing rod emoji straight in there. Oh, uh, I had to finish up. I hope you're all right, mate. But yeah, he bit hard on that one. But mm. I suppose it wasn't great timing, was it, for me? That was a bit out of order. But um, here, here's a question for you. Mm. When when did they change the rules on this penalty shootout? Because I swear it's so much better when forwards had to kick. You know, it gets way more <laughs> spicy. Imagine getting down to the type fives, getting having a crack. I concur completely. You just, you've got Sam Warburton. He's so sensible, isn't he? He's like, oh, this is a much better way to do it. You know, ah. the kicker's doing it. No, no one wants to see a kicker kick goals. People want to see props. People want to see yeah. Stefan Armitage promote their team yeah. to top 14. They, they want to see Mark Williams miss kicks. You know what I mean? That's that's the fun of it. Give some props and mental illness. I'm so down. <laughs> and I'm all for it up until I have to take a kick. I would have absolutely yeah. hit myself. Um, because I know I'm last on the roster. On the depth chart at Bristol, I'd be fully last. There's no, there's not even a, a debate. I've got feet like a centaur. There's no, there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> it's just, you're like, oh, listen, I can kick a football. This is easy. Like, easy. And then you try and do it. It just, no, it just doesn't go well, does it? Oh, man, there's some kind of technique to this. <laughs> but my God, yeah, that had everything, didn't it, that game? Like, I just thought... It was so good, such a good match. And then even like the extra time with the missed shots, with the missed drop goals, both like Toulouse and Munster both had a shot and it like creaking. And then you just knew it was going to, well, at the end of the game as well, obviously the 60 metre shot at goal, like yeah. and you were thinking, oh, come on. I, I was, we were watching it in the team room right? and there's a couple uh, couple of Munster men that are in our staff and they're obviously one of them and I'm like, please don't go because I wanted to see what happened. Because you never, I, we get, before we play, like, for example, the, the quarters there, we get told by the ref, right, if it obviously goes to extra time, it'll then go on try scored. If it doesn't, you know, if nothing happens, then it goes to extra time. Then it's if someone scores points and then it will go to the kicker. And I'm thinking it's nine o'clock. If that happens, I reckon we're one o'clock and we're still going. You know, like, that's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I'm having a laugh and a joke with the ref, but you're not planning for that, are you? The only people that plan for that are maybe some drop goals. Drop goals in training must be getting knocked about for for the end of the game but why is it in knockout rugby that always happens like it gets down to the wire i guess it's you don't think so like it you rarely see it in you rarely see it in a normal game come to like knockout rugby and there's always these dramas of like having that last minute penalty and things like that i reckon it it does something to someone's yeah, mentality crazy, isn't it? you be, maybe become a bit more conservative because it's just the knockout but yeah it was so good though. So, so good. but yeah, I think scrap scrap the rule of letting the kickers take kicks, take it back to everyone has to do one. So yeah. You have to select three kickers, both of you, mm. throughout history in a kick shootout for your lives. Who are you going with? Well, you you're obviously taking JW, JW Inkinson, and then um Neil Jenkins. And I'm gonna go with I feel like Andrew Merton's had better better sights on the on the boot than Dan Carter, so I'm going to go with Merton's. Ooh, right, there's a lot. There's a lot. You've forgotten an absolute Scottish legend there, Chris Patterson. Oh, Chris! <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to go Gavin Hastings. No, no, no. Mossy had that ball on a string. That... Yeah, he was some kicker. That's a good shout, Chris yeah. Patterson. Wow. He'd be in, he would definitely be in the mix. You've yeah. got Lee Halfpenny was always ridiculous at international. Level, he was always one. And he was very good. Throw him in the mix. You got Mornay Stain again. Like, yes. there's a lot, but a lot. You're right. I'm, I'm definitely with you on Johnny Wilkinson. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing Chris Patterson in there for sure. Yeah. So we have to agree on the third one. 
So you're 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 off Jenkins. Oh uh, yeah, we could chuck Jenkins in there. Um, Mertens, you're right. Mertens was up there between Mertens and Carter as well. Yeah. Pick one. You pick one. As long as Mossy's in there, I'm happy. Yeah. All right. We keep, yeah. That's like no. We'll just go with those three. Yeah. Wilkinson, Patterson, and Jenkins. Boom. There you are. Oh. Hey. <laughs> hey, lads. Whaty boy. We're delighted oh, yeah. to be joined by Wallaby Scrum Half Nick White and a fellow 99% barbarian like Ryan as well. How are things, Nick? I'm very good. Um, yeah, the Barbars week that we never had, or we did have, mm, we never played. Probably a good thing. Those blokes look pretty revved up. Um, but uh, made them pretty good. You know, Super Season's doing all right, so uh, yeah, can't complain. Kids are asleep. Yeah, you mentioned that, I oh, mate. I was desperate to see what it was like to play after Gans going out six of the seven nights just to see how the body held up. I was, I was so, I was, I was intrigued to see what would actually happen. I don't think I've, I've never, never got to do it, mate. And hey, like we said, there's still, uh, there's still this one. I know you'll be, you'll probably be in Oz, won't you? But June, you never know. England in June, June 18th, I think it is, if I'm not in the final. Barbells again. Why you surely just come over for that and then go and meet Aussie wherever they are? I look never say never, but I don't know. After, like you said, after six days of drinking, I was, uh, I was certain I wasn't going to put in the my best. Like uh, I was feeling pretty dusty. So if I do it again, I won't be hanging out with blokes like you that stay out all night. I'll, uh, I'll be taking it someone a little bit more serious. Uh, yeah, far out. I did feel a little bit better though. Must say, with uh, you know the, the suffers we had, you know with with Kits, Mark and Marks, and Big Dwayne, I, that was that was calming influence. Seeing those big buggers there with a pint, and be like, "Oh, we'll be right, boy." I was yeah. like, "Yeah, we will be right behind you. We'll be fine." <laughs> Nick, did you ever see what Ryan said about you on the show? And can, actually, can I read it to you because it's verbatim? It's it's quite funny. Okay, exactly. he said, yeah. I have met some absolute legends. I'm not even joking, some proper mates for life and blokes you'd never, ever believe it. Honestly, Nick White, I've played against him so many times. He's a mouthy little fucker on the field. One of those blokes that gets the eyes as well. Like, you fucking want to go, mate? Like, gives you the eyes across the pitch. And you're like, what is wrong with this bloke? Off the field, one of the best blokes I've ever met. Legend, absolute <laughs> legend. That's rugby. Oh. Thank you, Max. Yeah, it is. Thank you, Ryan, mate. Yeah, look, I've I've always been one that I hope that people that play against me know that I'm not like that at all off the park, like off the pitch. I'm completely different. It's like my little outlet. Um, I am. I do have small man syndrome. I uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know how small I am, and uh, I, I think when I walk onto that pitch, I am six foot eight and can can go toe to toe with everyone. I think. Thank goodness there's cameras that, that blokes can't hit me like back in the days. But um, yeah, look, I'm I'm a little bit nuts out on the field, but like I'm not. <laughs> I hope people don't understand that I'm not like that off the field. I'm not walking around hotels spraying, spraying my teammates and uh, spraying the the staff or anything like that, or walking down the street and giving a gobful to anyone who walks near me. I uh, I just save that for the 80 minutes on the weekend. <laughs> you know the eyes I'm talking about. You want to fucking go, mate? No, oh, that's what. You want to fucking go. <laughs> Oh, here he is. <laughs> yeah, look. Yeah, look, it's... Uh, I, don't know. I don't know where that comes from. It's just a bit nuts. I love it. I love it. Uh, Nick, obviously, you guys have been going so well this season. Massive Super Rugby contenders. You're sitting second. 10 wins from 11. Uh, how good does it feel, though, to be beating the, the Kiwi teams in particular? Yeah. I think that was always going to be the challenge. Like uh, the way the seasons turned out, um, you know, we played all the Aussie stuff first and yeah, there was always like a half eye on like, yeah, look, this is nice. Uh, getting a few wins against a few of the Aussie teams, um, but no disrespect to them. We knew that it was like, oh, well, like look, until we play a Kiwi side um, and really measure up against them, we won't know where we're sitting. So uh, look at kind of like the bye week came after we played all the Aussie teams. So we played all the Aussie teams, had a bye, then into the Kiwi. So it gave us that little break and then we're like, it's almost a, a new competition for us. Um, and yeah, look, we've done all right, um, which is good. You know, like it's been pretty tough for, for Aussie teams for a fair few super seasons now. And um, yeah, to, I don't know, be flying the flag for, um, you know, we feel like we're kind of having to fly it for, for Australian rugby at the moment and we're doing all right. We're, 
we've won the first three, but we've got the Crusaders and Blues in the next two, which will, uh, you know, that's kind of the top three at the moment. So, look, Crusaders this Friday night, and if we can get it over them at home, that kind of, you know, almost locks up um, our, our top two. Um, and then we've got the Blues the following week, and that'll, you know, hopefully we, we, we get a number on the Crusaders, and then it'll just be out and out. Um, you know, let, let, let's have it. It would be good to have the Blues over here because she's bloody cold here at the moment. And, uh, yeah, that uh, those that know Canberra pretty well, it can get pretty miserable here in winter. So uh, we know teams don't like coming down here. Um, the funny thing about Super Rugby, it's almost like Europe in that the, the higher you come up, it's pretty important when it gets to finals. So, you know, you get a home quarter final, a home semi final, but you also get a home final. Like it's not a neutral ground. So, you know, if we if we make it all the way, you'd love to be playing, you know, the Crusaders or Blues here in Canberra in miserable conditions, which would be great rather than having to go over and try to take him on in, in Auckland. <sighs> Or uh, or going down to Christchurch. So look, yeah, it's a it's a big one the next couple of weeks. But uh, yeah, we're doing all right. You know what I'm jealous of the fact that you get to go over. Uh, did you play? Did you play um, the Ndrua in Fiji, or did you play them over in Oz when they had their own game? <laughs> no, we 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 got them in uh, in Oz. The poor buggers they were they weren't able to go back. But like we watched the Highlanders go over there, and everyone was like, "Oh, gee, there'll be Fijians climbing." up the stands. They'll, they'll be hanging from the rooftops just to watch this game. And you're like, oh, you'd hate to be that team that versed them first. But Highlanders did well to get a win there. Like 31 degrees, humid as fuck. And, and you know, like right if Aaron's, the end, Yeah, it was right at the end. Like if Aaron Smith's saying it's one of the toughest games he's played and his lungs were hanging out, like Max, mate, imagine how you're... <laughs> I mean, like the big boys up front must have been absolutely hurting. And like, honestly, like when you play the Fijians over here, like I reckon we got them at a good time. But when they went over there, I reckon they were all nine foot tall. Yeah. Like, oh, just I, like they all grew a leg and it just would have been so hard. I love, I absolutely love watching them. Like, it's so good seeing them do well as well. And like, everyone was worried eh, that they'd throw a team together and they wouldn't be that competitive. But I think the more, because they're looking at doing the Chiefs game over there, eh? the more games they get back in La Toca, they'll just be killing it. Yeah. I'm, mate, I'm looking for a contract over there. I wonder if I... <laughs> Ronnie White man can get a job over there in the Fijian and Drua. Even as a kit man, we joke about it, but I'd do anything to be involved in that setup. Absolute legends. Uh, Nick, obviously, great season full of so many highs so far. So, obviously, what we'll do is bring that down a bit. Hunter Pasami, aka the Hitman, uh, made you one of his victims last month. How did that feel? Well, that was, that was hilarious, man. That hurt a lot. So, as I run onto the field, it's a line out. And I'm coming on, played the last, you know, 20 or 30. And I run past Hunter. I was like, look after it, dad, mate. Like, he's, he's now got a little girl. And, and we're, you know, we, we, we're pretty close at Wallaby Camp. So I was like, mate, look after me. Yeah, no worries. Uh, 15 minutes later, he absolutely cuts me in half. <laughs> and uh, honestly, you can see in the footage, I, like, I grab him straight away. That was just like instinct. Like straight away, I was winded. And I just grabbed him. I was like, oh, you're kidding. <laughs> and then... And then this is how nice he is. He's cut me in half. And then on my way down, he's like, sorry, mate. <laughs> I'm like, oh, don't worry about it, mate. Like, it is what it is. It was a terrible move. Never should have never should have tried it on you. Um, uh, but, yeah, look, he's taken some serious victims. And, unfortunately, I'm on that list now. I'm on the list. Rene Ranger's list, Hannah's list. Anyone else who's belted me. There's been a few. Uh, we had, um, I think it was Eben Etzebet. Uh, talking to Big Jim over the weekend on Rugby Pass, uh, Marnoni was a player who hit him the hardest throughout his career. Uh, you know, Rai, Max, who, who would you choose for the player who's hit you the hardest? Um, I'll, I'll say it every time. I'll throw Jerry Collins out there when he played Frost Brace. Absolutely melting, boys, and like put me in two. Like put me in two and then strangled me on the floor afterwards as well. <laughs> he was a hard hitter. Recently, Actually, this season, um, I took a decent carry into Courtney and oh, uh, yeah. didn't end well, man. I've never really, you know, when you like, you've obviously got real bad shoulders, right? What? And that was the first time I've really <laughs> come up as like as real complicated joints. He completely disassembled the AC. I was like, I had this little like bulge just popping up here in the collarbone. I was like, my God, what's that? Oh yeah, I got, I got those those things. Yeah, bro, they're fucked. We nobles. 
Yeah, that was that was very tasty. I was like, yeah, the the legend is real. My yeah, God. he can, he can melt some boys, yeah. can't he? He can melt some boys as well. well. I still stand by it. Chris Alafi is the most terrifying hitter I've ever seen, will ever see in this game. My, he should have played rugby league, wasted in the Union game, and now he'd be literally his favorite color would be red every weekend. There's no chance he'd survive out. Yeah, wouldn't <laughs> last. Wouldn't last two minutes. Really. No chance. Uh, Nick. We sort of mentioned, you know, obviously the World Cups in France next year. There's some chat circulating. You might not be playing. You could be could be off the, the yearning for the yen in Japan. Give us a bit of an update on that one. Uh, yeah, that's something I snuck out. Um, yeah, look, I'm off contract at the end of the year. Um, and hopefully it'll get sorted in the, the next bit of time. But, um, you know, I've got, got three mouths to feed. So, yeah. Um, you know, look, it's it's funny that there's you know since I came back in in 2019, um, the rules continually change with Rugby Australia, so it's hard to know where um, where all that that kind of lies. You know, like can you can you go away and still play? Um, you know, the, the rules three at the moment. Um, you know, last year it was we had a number of guys on on spring tour, and you know, obviously brought Quaid and Summer and these guys back, and I, I think it's helped a lot. So um, just get a little bit more clarity on that and. Um, look, I certainly want to make sure I'm I'm there at that World Cup if I if I can be. So you know, I'd, I'd hate to jeopardise that, but I just need to 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 get some clarity around that because once upon a time it was it was just if you if you left the Australian shores it was it was done. But I think uh, with the climate where rugby is in Australia at the moment and and the money and, and what's out there, I think that's a bit unrealistic to think that we can hold on to everybody. So um, you know, there's some money there to be had, and you know, I'm not getting any younger. So. Big no, listen, yeah. any 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 problems, just let me know. I'll give Renz a call. <laughs> big, big David. <laughs> Renz, mate, listen. He'll understand. Nick, you've spoken about uh, the awkwardness and sort of personal attacks and even a sort of hatred between Eddie Jones and Michael Checker over the years. Can you give us an insight into how heated it got between them? Uh, look, I'd, I kind of caught the tail end of it in, in 19. Uh, missed all of it when it was juicy in like 16 and then through those years where it went a bit grim there for a bit. But I um, oh, look, they're both, they'll say that there's nothing there. Obviously, it um, <laughs> comes out in the media a bit different there. They're, look, they're both masterminds of playing the games. Like there'll be, there's none better than, than Czech for sure. And Eddie's got his finger to the pulse. But like, they're both from Ramwick, this small club in Sydney that's produced a phenomenal amount of wallabies. And like the the alumni there of, of old boys, of, of, you know, it's just that that connection there, and they're both Ramwick old boys, and they give each other stick. But I can I can guarantee you, like now that things are done, they've probably caught each other, been out, had you know a few wines, dinners together, that sort of stuff. Like wouldn't have got that heated, but they're very good at stirring each other up in the media, and it's great to watch. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it you know I guess the stage where like check saying like don't even look at them when you walk out. I want you to talk to any of them. I don't want you. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm walking out the tunnel and I'm, I, play, I play with these blokes. I'm like, don't you fucking look at Henry Slade? Don't you even shake his hand? Don't you you're like, oh mate. Like, so, yeah, does Tatsy still tense. do that? <laughs> Did Tatsy? No, mate, he Tats- hasn't. But Tatsy used to do that. Matt Taylor, their their defence coach, he used to do that with us. They're not your mates. Don't speak to them before the game. Like, you, you make sure you ignore them. That's part of where I got it from. He used to make me do it, so I, just, I like bought into it big time. <laughs> Try and make it as awkward as possible before the game. <laughs> no, I've seen your antics pre-game and oh, I love it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it got pretty heated there. But um, I'm sure, like I said, they're both like they're both mates off the field. So uh, look, Eddie, I've never met, but he's someone I tell everyone all the time. Like if I had, you know, they do that. Like oh, if you had three people you could have dinner with, I'm always like, Eddie Jones. <laughs> I'd love to sit down and pick his brain. Like he just seems like just something different. Like all the stories I've heard, like we're talking back to like the guys I've played with when I first started here, they had him at Brumbies, like the really old, old school Eddie, which, you know, it sounds like he's moving with the times and not so harsh on people, but you know, we're talking grown men that couldn't throw line out, shaking their arms. Cause Eddie was walking behind them. Like that scared of the guy. And I'm like, how's this guy? A short guy. Yes. Um, got all these men shaking in their boots. What's the secret? Um, quick, just quick, quickly finish off on on, on checks. Apparently, quite, quite you know emotional, quite loose as well. What are your loosest recollections of him on and off the field? Oh, look, I, I really liked check. I, I love that. Um, 
you know, when he trained, um, he'd be this one personality, but he was able to to leave it on the field. You know, like a little bit like I started the interview with. Like I'm when I'm on the field, I'm a I'm a different person than when I leave. And I feel like um, Checker when he was in in rugby and in meetings and and um, out on the field, he, you know, he was he was so passionate. And then once he'd leave it, he'd be able to just leave it. You know, like how as your wife, as the kids. Um, you know, always celebrated the little things. Um, he's really charismatic. And, you know, when he enters a room, the energy lifts. Like, um, I really liked that. But, yeah, he had some crazy moments within those rugby moments for sure. Like, I wasn't there at the halftime um, speech that, you know, I'm sure everyone's seen on Twitter over there in Argentina and, um, you know, ripped the whole front row off. <laughs> no, you're done. New ones. You're in. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and there's certainly been some tense tense times. Um, I remember in 2015, I was I was kind of on the outer um, anyway, and Anson, I was going to France, but you know, we played the All Blacks in Sydney, and and pre-game, he's like, you know, we're going to beat these blokes, and we're going to just beat them. And then I I come on, and you know, like, you know, I, was, I scored a try and kicked a couple of goals and come off, and he's like, I fucking told you not to beat them by that much, and then walked off, and I was like. We just beat the All Blacks. Like, I'm stoked. You know, I haven't played the game of my life, which I'm still living off. And here you are angry because, you yeah, know, we didn't beat them by just a couple of points. We beat them by 10. <laughs> you know, he's, uh, he's, he's an absolute character. And, uh, yeah, like, like I said, like, I, I think once guys understood that, like, he was he was so passionate and intense, but, like, would leave it there and then able to, to be a different person. I think, yeah, it was, it was someone very well liked. Did he take part in like the fitness sessions and stuff? Yeah, funny story. Yeah, keep asking me check ones. There's heaps. Um, <laughs> so we're on spring tour anyway, and I'm uh, 2014, and <laughs> we're doing double D's, and I'd done like three weeks of it anyway. I'm there with Matt Hodgson, and we're in Ireland, and it's game day, and we do our 923, like get absolutely flogged. And it's miserable. We go into this gym, and we're in a boxing ring, and two guys are got to go back to back. I've got Matt Hodgson here. And uh, like eight guys surround you and come in and you're boxing and like, you know, they're just coming at you. So you can just sit there and protect or you can throw a couple back if you see someone like, you know, I can get out of here. Anyway, I'm, I'm, mate, I'm, I'm literally just like this copping it from the lads. Anyway, uh, Hodjo seen check. Anyway, so check at the start had had his nose operated on because he was having a bit of um, sleep apnea and whatnot. And he's jumped in and he's having a bit of fun, whack. And then Matt Hodgson's just crack, dunk, hit him. <laughs> And he goes, oh, you fucking, I just had that operated on you. Fucked it. <laughs> oh, Hodjo, your career's done. See you, mate. <laughs> you are, you, you won't be seen again. He retired at the end of the year anyway. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Chuck used to love jumping in. He used to do all that mad stuff, tape mouths, run up hills. He'd jump in and uh, yeah, I loved it. He, I think one training session, I think Israel Falaud, like sp- I don't know if you like the specky cats where like AFL players like jump on the back. Israel right. Falau can jump like eight feet in the air and he's just like launched a knee straight into checked back and he's hit the deck and I think done his shoulder. No good. I think he got it operated on the next year. Um, you know, he's just out there in amongst it. You wouldn't know it. He got up. Okay, here we go. But uh, like I said, once he was on the field, he's quite, quite a character, quite passionate, got involved. Yeah, there's, there's getting involved in like hill runs and training, mate. But then there's then there's getting involved in boxing with the boys. Imagine, oh, hey, what what happened if Big Pat got in the ring with a couple of boys down there, Max? <laughs> oh, <laughs> clean some lights, I reckon. <laughs> He'd actually be able to finally exert his frustrations on some players that were doing his nothing. You would not want to collect one off Big Pat Lamp. Ooh. <laughs> that, that would be tasty, That's heavy mental. hands, I reckon. That's mental. I love that. That's so good. Yeah. No, it was always good when you get an absolute flog, like doing like mindless hills, and you see him like plugging yeah. in as well. He's not just standing there having a coffee spray and you're going, run faster. Like he's there with you in the hurt locker. And then at the end, he's like, you're like mate, don't have a heart attack on us. Like, you know, we're in the hurt locker. You look after yourself, though. But, mate, it was good. I, I, I enjoyed that when he joined in. So that was good. Yeah, that's brilliant. They won't, I don't think there'll be any other coaches out there that would do that. They'd join in with the boys. But, uh, or back back in the back in the day um, at Brumbies here, Steve Larkham had just kind of retired like 2011, 12, 13. Anyway, and he'd dust off the boots every now and then when there'd be a couple of injuries and and playing like the the Reggie's 23. What, what was it, it was like then, coming coming through the Brumbies and then 
sort of Larkin was coming to the end of his career, but obviously such a complete and utter global legend. Yeah, I feel like I was pretty lucky. I, you know, I, I got, kind of got here at the end of um, end of '08, saw '09, '10, and '11 of like some absolute superstars. Um, you know, pinch myself that I could be around them. Um, you know, Bernie being one of them. You know, like passing the border guys like Matt Giddo. Um, I remember my first uh, my first week at the club. I'd like, you know, like fresh fresh little kid. I'd come in, tore my hip flexor. Um, sorry, I've diverted to a completely different story here. Um, and <laughs> I just remember this. It was unbelievable. And uh, my first couple of weeks. And anyway, um, I went in and at the time we were training in the morning and we'd go up and we'd have brunch. And I'd just been doing a little bit of rehab, nothing really, like a little 18-year-old kid, 60 kilos. And I'd come in, the boys would just finish training. I'd put some toast in. Anyway, I'd come up and there's Mark, Mark Gerard just walks in and he goes, oh, mate, you, you're going to have some toast, are you? And I was like, oh, I, No. Then he's like, he's like, he's like, you've been here two minutes, mate. I've been here eight years. No, no, but you have some toast. And I was like, whoa, okay, no toast, no toast. And then, and then George George Smith pokes his head out from behind the wall. He goes, oh, you want to play that game, do you, Mark? And I'm like, oh. And he's like, no, put your toast back in, Nick. And I'm like, no, nah, I didn't want toast. So here I'm, George Smith on one side telling me, no, have your toast. Mark Drive going like, no, you can fuck off now. And I'm like, well, well, okay. Let's get out of here. <laughs> oh, mate, that's so true. Yeah. That's good. You want that though. You want that when you're a kid. Oh, good for yeah. you. Oh, yeah, awesome. But uh, it was it was awesome. Like we had like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to think like back then, like you know, I had Rocky Elson, Steve Hoyles, um, you know, just all the absolute big dogs. Like they were called the Real Madrid of of Super Rugby in 2010. Like the the, the team was just littered with these like big names they were terrible in 2010 but they had a squad full of big names and you know i'd go down to physio i can still remember it and they'd like rocky elson would walk in and he'd just point at the table i'm like yeah mate all yours yep no i get shoulder but no you have it all right but <laughs> here's just... the question then Whitey. what are you like now with the young boys like nah, it's a different time mate like, it's isn't it that's the problem time, they're but... too soft now <laughs> Yeah, you, you can't be doing that. So, like, and I'm glad I saw it, and I'm glad, like, I got. Oh, I didn't speak. I can, you can, also can attest to this. Like, I don't shut up, but I didn't speak for my first three years down there. Like, I was just in awe, like, around these guys, and just got to soak it up. And you know, I I still remember passing the border gits on this real dewy Canberra morning, and um, like, I was like, you know, like six or seven strings coming in to hold a pad and help. And I've thrown a pass in like a unit session to Gits and it's like gone like, I don't know, at his feet or like it too far out in front. He's just gone, who's this? Fuck him off. Let's get Valo back. Like, <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, but hold on a minute. <laughs> like, right, okay. So you were saying now, because I, I, Matt, I'm with you, like back in the day, it was, it was like that. But yeah. now everyone's so PC. Are we going to have a generation who's just soft cocks that are just, <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they've got there, mate. They've got it too easy. Right, it comes back around, don't worry. Yeah, well, because... I, re- I hope so, Look, because, like, at the, the weekend there, for example, one of the boys never travelled with a team, academy boy, gets on the bus, no seats left down the front, and he's he's quite far back, and it was... Too far back. <laughs> it was too far. <laughs> <laughs> too far back. You're right. What you, are you doing you here, no, Yeah, you get nosebleed <laughs> back here, pal. You, you, you know you're past the toilets, and I'm pretty sure you haven't ever played. <laughs> And he's like, this. oh no, oh no, what do I do? I'm like, I suggest you go and ask someone down the front. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to give it yeah. a little bit still. Yeah, no, I can go. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think so. You definitely have to. Like, and yeah, like you asked me who I'd have, who'd have dinner with, said Michael Jordan. Like, I love that he used to be, you know, like, and this is taking it too far, but like, he used to, to raise his teammates and, and he'd ask him why. It was like, oh, so, you know, like, under pressure, I, I knew that they'd, they'd already been under pressure. You know, I'd, I'd given it to them. And, you know, there is an element of that. Like the young kids, we, we muddle cut them a little bit. And, um, you know, you can't give it to anyone anymore because I'll go straight to HR or, um, you know, whoever your players rep is and uh, Whitey's bullying me again. Um, <laughs> but, you know what I mean? But when, yeah. when you get out there at Twickenham and there's 80,000 people, or you go over to, you know, go over to Eden Park, you know, it's Auckland full of Kiwis and you've got to win the bladders over back, you know, and, not, you had no shit not, about putting some toast in a toaster, mate. You're, you're <laughs> under the pump. You're fucked. You're fucked. You go yeah, back so to those moments. You go. Well. You go back to the moment you put the toast in. And you're getting told, "Do you really oh, want toast?" Yeah, you guys. This, this is nothing on being torn between George Smith and Mark Gerard. This is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll tell you who does that still at Bristol actually a bit. Sinks, Sinks is good at that. He'll fly into boys left, right, and rhubarb on anything. He, he's decent. But I remember when I started at Irish, Paul Hodgson he used to play for England the nine. Mate, if you didn't ball press, he was stamping on you. He was stamping on all, all over you in training. And then Bob Casey in lineouts, big Bob. If mate, if the darts were off, next hooker. If you got the oh. you got the lineout drill wrong, you were out, bro. It was nutty. Yeah. And nothing like that anymore. Agreed. Yeah. It's, it's, but that's because they'll have been through it. So they like know yeah, what it's done for them. It's out. like, you know, you, if you've got someone, not these boys will never yeah. had it done to them. So they can't really do it to other people. I remember London Irish. Remember that gold academy thing that down there that you yeah, used to be part of? And I came, yeah. I came down the train and you boys are there. And someone said, I'll oh, go get changed in there. And it was um, Del and Armitage and Topsy Ojo walked in and like, what the fuck are you doing in there? And I, oh, and they're like, get the fuck out. <laughs> Let's get on my bags and run out of this change room. Like, shit, sorry, boys. Someone told me to get changed in there. Yeah. But it's all part of it. It's all yeah. part of it. You need it. Nick, you made your debut for the Wallabies in 2013 against Argentina. Tell us uh, your recollections from that day. Yeah, remember bits of the game. Remember a cracking night after over there in Perth. Um, that's, you know, yeah, that was where the action game. happened. Talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. let's the, just go to the night now, please. <laughs> yeah, it was a great night. Uh, no, the game, honestly, it, it was played at Subiaco, so a big AFL field, so like tiny little rugby field, fans were miles away. Um, it was coming in absolute sideways. It was a hor- horrible, horrible night. I feel like I just... Um, yeah, like it was a night with, I think I just box kicked a, a thousand times. And look, if it if it go if we can explain how good the night was, that was the night that uh, James O'Connor went ended up going to the airport and ended up being his. Uh, that was that he went. That that was it. Yeah, like uh, we went back to the hotel. We're obviously flying flying back home for a week, then go out and we're looking at the papers. Like, oh shit! I've just gone to the airport and trying to fly out and. That turned out to be him heading overseas. That was the end of him. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Good night, that one. <laughs> Played a lot of uh, rugby as well with the honey badger that we had on recently. What, what's your greatest memory of him off the pitch? Right. I, I, yeah. So me and, me and Badge were rooming together in, in 2015 up on the Sunshine Coast. Yes. And, um, you know, like we're... Should have known straight away. Like, yeah, the, the both of us room together. We knew we were getting cut. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's honestly, how long does this pod, how long does this podcast go for? I've got so many stories. Um, <laughs> the first one being like, if we got told, we got a text message like saying, like, oh, I've got to go, got to go, like, um, meet this person. Anyway, we end up going. You go and meet this person. You're not allowed to tell anybody in the squad, anybody about it. You go and sit in this room. It was like an SAS thing and do a lie detector test. It was all very a bit odd and like funny. And uh, anyway, and then I left left the room. I went back. I was like, this is bizarre. What is this? So I walked straight into to Badge and we're both just standing there looking at each other. Both got text messages saying, don't tell each other. But it's like, you dance around. You're like, did you do yours? Do what? What did you do it? Do what? Yep. And then Badger's like, yeah, I did it. I'm like, do what? Like, you say it. You say it first. Anyway, so we got we got there. Like, yeah, fine. we'll talk to each other about it. How weird was that? That SAS thing. Anyway, so then at the end of that camp, we both get cut. We're like, oh, bugger. We, we got pretty close. This where first time we are room together. And then Czech goes, all right, so you two, you can go to Chicago, which is where they're going to play their, do their pre-camp and play against the state. So you guys can go for a week, do some promotion for the game. Um and I was like, oh, how good. And obviously the honey badger being the honey badger, I was like, what am I doing? And they're like, yeah, so why do you just babysit the badge if you can? And I was like, what does that mean? Like, like a full grown man, he's older than me. Like, I'm only 24 at this stage. And anyway, now I know why he needed a babysitter. <laughs> what a week that was. Phenomenal week. Um, yeah, little things from he had karma cards at the time, which is so cool. But like, I used to hand out these karma cards, hoping that he passed it to some random person in the world and they could get back to him somehow. And anyway, we're sitting on this <laughs> business class flight. You know, this is where we go down to Sydney and we're in business class. And you know, I'm just sitting there, just about to take off, put on our like lovely wear our wallabies clothes on, then put on the, the PJs, and he just rips his full out as part. And I just like. And just looks at me and giggles. And I'm like, mate, I don't know if that's play on eight. Like a few people are looking at us. 
<laughs> this woman in France, real fuming. Then he's just like, rips another one. I'm like, man, I don't know about that. <laughs> just looking at me giggling while she's standing out, giving a mouthful, like, go to the back of the plane. <laughs> and he's just like, he's just looking at me while she's behind spraying him. And he's talking to me going, how about this bird? How angry is she? <laughs> I'm like, how awkward is this? But yeah, that's just bad. He's he's on a he's honestly on a on a different world. Like I, I thought the the interviews like and I'm like, how cool is this guy? I thought oh, he's just putting it on. Not at all. He is that different. And uh, look, he did some pretty special things in Chicago. We obviously promoted the game. Had some did some cool times. But I didn't know where he was going one one night. Like we'd finish at like five and and Badge would kind of go off and do his own thing for a couple of hours. And the first night he did it, and then the second night I was like, Matt, what are you doing? And he, um, and he goes, oh, I'm just going around the corner to fill up a trolley full of canned food and I'm just going to take it down to all the homeless people that live kind of like below the streets. And I was like, oh, really? And um, Matt, we go there, he'd spend, I'm talking like an, a phenomenal amount of money filling up this trolley full of food. And he'd just go down there and spend hours. Um, you know, he wouldn't just give them food. He'd stop, talk to them. Um, you know, I hear a bit about their story, give them a bit of food, move on to the next one. Like I felt so kind of vulnerable like well they, these people could be dangerous but he just walks up all jolly like hey mate how you going you know, honey budget here you want some food like and, and talk to him like, he's just honestly soul to the earth that bloke like just yeah you know, like at, at times inappropriate doing farts on planes and giggling like a little kid but he is there is not a mean bone in that bloke's body honestly just a, a phenomenal guy and uh i'm glad i had that week with him and then room with him a couple of weeks after that which was pretty loose as well uh, in 2015, you decided to join Montpellier in the in the in France in the top Qatar, the top four team. Craziest difference between professionalism and in in Oz and in France? Yeah, it was pretty different. I don't think I was I was, I was ready for how different it was um, in France. Uh, you know, it took me a little while, and yeah, you know, like just the, the French guys telling me like, "Yeah, Nick, you've got it all wrong." Like, yeah. We work to live here. And I was like, you know, like, mate, you just live to work. And I was like, I do. I love rugby. I love it. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> uh, so, like, it was, a, it was a bit of a mindset shift, um, you know. So, yeah, look, I don't it, I don't think it was probably an ideal move for me going to, to that competition. I'm a pretty structured player. Um, you know, I certainly like pace in the game. There's some big men. It's a little bit slower over there and, and probably didn't quite suit me. But in terms of lifestyle, you won't get any better than Montpellier. And there were some some uh, good couple of years with uh, you know with the foreign foreigners over there and uh, yeah it's uh, you know, I, I knew it, I, I'd had to probably go somewhere else to, to find what what I needed rugby wise but in terms of off field and, and, and places there <laughs> there ain't much better than there but uh, yeah it's a, it's a different league it's uh, honestly anything can happen in a game of rugby over there anything nothing would shock you who's who's the best value teammate at Montpellier for you. Best value teammate. Oh, I had some some crackers there. Like probably like Francois Stein, I really enjoyed him. Like we 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 became pretty close. Like oh, I just loved everything about the guy. Like um still do. Like he'd come in, he'd just come in, sip on a can of Coke, you know, give shit to the other boys, like uh, oh, you know, the, the boys about being on you know, roids and whatnot, and he'd sit there with his with his belly and just being a big man and oh you want to lift weights, yeah. You know, <laughs> how good and then he'd go out there on the weekend and just become an absolute beast. Like he'd run 8K, be the most competitive, he'd fly and into absolutely every contact. And you're like, hey, how good is this bike? Like, and, and then as soon as he like, you know, a little bit like me, like he was super competitive and and, a, and just a different personality on the field. Like, um, you know, we certainly had our Barneys on the field. and then But then off the field, he was just the most jovial um, within the group and, uh, and certainly the glue at that time because we had – you know, uh, a, a big mix of, of, of South Africans, uh, a few Aussies, Kiwis, a lot of Georgians, Fijians, and, and the French who weren't happy about that at all. So, you know, we needed guys like Francois that could could glue the team together. So him, like, I don't know, Namani Nandolo was pretty cool to play with. You know, Bismarck Duplessis. Like, it was like a world – it was like playing in a Barbas team down yeah. there, honestly, it was. So cool. I thought it was – uh, Jake White was there. He was, yep. Yeah. I thought if we thought it would be structured with him there though. Was he just was he just uh, in the team and he let the coaches do that? Oh, Jake's always been more of a like a, he's not much of a technical coach. So uh, oh. you know, he kind of he was more like uh like on the boss and could get all egos in check and you know, he's a good 
he's good at getting the right people in the right places, but in terms of, um, you know, his Got type, uh, yeah, like he gets in the right assistance, which he did. Like he had, we had awesome assistant coach and like Scott Wisemantle, you could see it was driving him insane. But in terms of getting like structure in there, like you're going into a team meeting and you're like, okay, if I do it in, you know, for example, I do it in English, like at least you know, a third of the team's going to know. I do it in French, at least half the team. And you're going to speak Afrikaans and Georgian and, you know, the Fijians will just nod and they've got no idea. And like it was, there were a lot of languages, a lot of lot of different cultures and it was pretty tricky, certainly for an attack coach to to get too much going. Um, yeah, and that, you know, that certainly stuff with the, certainly the ones that were ambitious within the team, like myself. Um, all right, how do we dumb it right down? Because we've got everyone on the same page here and, uh, we got there, like we we won a Challenge Cup and we went pretty well, came third both years and, you know, but, you know, I felt like with the team we had, we should have done a whole lot better. Yeah, I get you. Challenge Cup night out, any good? Well, not really. Well, like it was, I would, yeah, we, it was in Lyon and, and we went down to a boat and had a few beers, but I just, you know, I, I remember looking at one of the boys and being like, we're celebrating becoming the 26th best team in Europe. Like, you know what I mean? Like we're we're coming second in the top fourteen, and we got La Rochelle away, which was a big game, and I felt like we were treating it like we'd just won Europe, but we hadn't. We won the Challenge Cup, which meant nothing to us at the time because we we're coming second. So I was like, you know, I knew it was a big deal for the boys just to win a trophy, especially the French guys and for the owner. But my eye was kind of more on the top fourteen. It kind of I was probably a bit disappointed that the boys went on like a three four day bender, and then we got absolutely punished by La Rochelle away, and it kind of hurt us in the long run because we end up falling down the ladder a little bit that year. So, um, yeah, look, it was a bit of a night out. I had a few beers and celebrate that. Obviously it's, it's a trophy, but it wasn't, it's not one of the ones I was going for. You know, you want to win top 14, you want to win Europe, you want to win Prem. So they're the ones like that you want to get at. But yeah, the, the, the Frenchies certainly ride the roller coasters. Like when they win away from home and he's like winning a grand final. And when you lose at home, be wary of the tap on the shoulder. Contracts are, up for negotiation right. like it is it is like meetings on Monday morning like crisis you've lost at home so but that's just how it is and, and that's another part that I had to learn to enjoy that you just have to ride the roller coaster you joined Exeter for an incredible couple of years what's your greatest memory down there the initiation oh, that is that is so hard because there's so many like so many great socials well, we went away. We, we had to play Leinster in Leinster. At, um, I think it was like a, the second of the head-to-head games. We'd lost at home. We had to go over there and get a result. Uh, we threw the kitchen sink at them. Um, ended up losing in the last kind of, kind of minute. But, um, and that week, <laughs> they, uh, they're like, oh, we've got to do a Christmas do. So um, the, the club's just like, Rob's like, yeah, so the whole squad's going to fly over. And all the boys are like, how yeah, good. And uh, all the boys came over. They started like, oh, you'd hate to know what time, like probably like six or seven in the morning. And they're all dressed up in like Christmas oppo suits. So then we get to Aviva and like you just, the whole place is Leinster. And then there's this like rocked up at like what time, like two, three o'clock in the afternoon, absolutely steaming, like 30 or 40 Chiefs lads. And they just take up this section and they're just bellowing out like, the you know the tomahawk chop and like everything we just all you could all you could hear was those lads that whole game and then straight after obviously like I said we were pretty proud of our performance I didn't get the result but everyone was straight into oppo suits and a, and a huge Christmas do out in Dublin oh. and I was just like honestly oh. like that's that's kind of what rugby's about to me like yeah like having the whole squad come across like not like hey lads you can go over and have fun in Dublin and have a Christmas social like we're all doing it as a team because that's what we're about and like, you know, it was uh, – the, the funniest thing was the boys had to play, I think, Gloucester in, like, a Monday night game. And and Rob's like, look, boys, like, we're, we're going to do this still, but, like, you've got to turn up Monday. And the boys went up there to Gloucester and um, hung over as hell and, and did the job. I think they won by 50 or 60 and, and got it done. And and that's what they're about down there. Like, you know, like, we, we train hard, play hard, but you, you, you enjoy yourself and, and drink hard too. So that's why I loved it. I think that's why Aussies do pretty well down there because we're kind of of that mindset. You know, we, we do everything. Uh, right. Finally, Nick, you, you're taking a cab. There are four spaces spare. So including yourself, you're about to go out on the biggest night of your lives. <laughs> Who are you picking to take those four seats and why? Oh, that is tough. 
Oh, wow. That's a big question. Oh, that is huge. Huge. So just um, players I've played with or anybody I've crossed paths with? No, I reckon um, players you've played with, I think it's got to be, you've got to know what they're like on the piss. Yep. Yep. Okay. Dave Dennis. Why? Uh, why? Oh, good crack. Um, he's honestly one of the, just the greatest guys. Um, just good to be around. He is just good vibes. I've never seen that guy in a bad mood in my life. He's over Giltini's, is he? Yeah, Giltini's. Um, he was there at Exeter for a while. Like I'm sure the Exeter boys could speak to it. Like he's just, boys just get around him. Like he's just, yeah. you know, when Deno's there, everything will be okay. Like you're like, oh, Deno's here. All good. Yeah, uh, Nolsey. Put Nolsey in there. He's good crack. Again, a bloke that just is never in a bad mood. Um, a regular, a podcast regular. And now that he's injured, he's back drinking, which is, you know, only good. Because, you know, he went back <laughs> drinking for ages. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, he did well, didn't he, for it? He did well, right? He played for England again. He was doing really well. And now you're trying to yeah. denigrate for it. What's yeah, he's, a be- he's a better man for having a beer now. Look, he, he lost a couple of gigs. I did, I did text him, Sharon. I thought, what's cracked here? <laughs> <laughs> if they're all at home, mate. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I won't be giving it up. I was, <laughs> my dad texted me. He's like, text me the article of Melzi giving up. He's like, what do you think? I was like, an idiot. <laughs> what's he done wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, nah, Melzi, Dano. Uh, oh. No, nah, he's too loose. I was going to say maybe Dicky, but no, nah, that's a li- liability. Um, Who, is that Karen Dicky? Yeah, Karen Dicky. Yeah. Is he really yeah, loose, yeah. is he? Oh, yeah. Like, for, for a period, though, it's like, as it goes to before drop-off, like, there's a period where it's like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> then goes, oh, no! And, then, like, and then, the, then the next drink gets passed to him, you're like, okay, operation, avoid him. <laughs> um, so, no, not him. Uh, for, um, oh, Drew Mitchell. Oh, I've heard great things about this man. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I uh so oh tell a story that mm. <laughs> just tell it. Just tell it. Just tell it. Yeah, we can decide after. Um <laughs> no, nah, so like uh we weren't playing one weekend in Montpellier and, and Drew was at Toulon. And um anyway, we we messaged him like, what are you going on? And he's like, Oh mate, just sitting at home and sent like a picture of a six pack. And I was like, Oh, look, we're just at the we're just at the pub. Moggy was texting him and no, uh, we're we're on the rum and cokes, being there most of the afternoon watching some rugby. And then he's like, Oh, should we just meet in the middle? And I was like, well, I didn't really know what he meant. And then he's like, Well, it's two hours away. If I go an hour, you go an hour, and we meet like Axe and Provence and just have a night out there. I was like, mate, deal. How good. So I booked a hotel. Like I'd never been out with like Drew really before. And like, I was like, all right. So we drive, we meet in there. Epic night out. Woke up in the morning, part of ways. He's back to Toulon. We're back to Montpellier. And like, there's little things like that that I appreciated from from my, my French life where like, you know, whatever foreigners were at a different team, you'd just like, you'd find each other and be like, you surviving? You good? <laughs> good. But yeah, like to, to meet him like that and yeah. To say I've played with him is awesome, but to say I've had a night out with him. Oh. See, Al, this is the most important question you've asked him. And fucking probably yeah. one of the most important questions you've ever been asked, I guess. Well, okay. If I say Gitz, it's just because I'm a fanboy, like, and I just want to be around him. <laughs> um, like, it's it's not because he's a good cracker. I just I think it'd be really cool to be seen somewhere. Like, I'll be taking photos and showing everyone. <laughs> Gets. What are you doing? <laughs> Fucking hell, that. That's a loose taxi, though, man. So, Dave yeah. Dennis. I'll, yeah, Dave Dennis, Drew Mitchell, mate, get out far out. So it's an older crew. Sadly, that is all the time we've got left for this week. Uh, do join us on our Rugby Pass Discord group uh, to discuss all the rugby news, the transfer speculation, of course, the latest announcements uh, for this pod as well, community growing fast so be one of the first to join us there and you do that by pressing the link in our description but thank you very much to ryan and to max and to to nick legendary stuff and we'll see you all next week